The NFL has been around for over 100 years now, but what's the big secret the NFL doesn't want you to know about? Stay tuned. So with another historic NFL season in the books and a heated free agency market underway, I want to take a second to just reflect back on the history and impact of black quarterbacks in the league. Black players have been central to the success of the National Football League for decades. It wasn't going to be a level playing field. Black quarterbacks weren't always celebrated or even tolerated. So let's talk about the NFL and the landscape of uh, where we are now with black quarterbacks and the popularity and how, you know, you have quarterbacks like Mahomes and Jalen Hurts showcasing their talent in the last Super Bowl. You have Lamar Jackson right now fighting for a new deal with the Ravens or any other team that's willing to take a chance on him. I don't even know why that's a question at all. Lamar has proven that he's talented and worth the money. Mahomes is the top QB in the league right now. He's proven that he's talented, smart, you know, all of the above, which in the past, most black quarterbacks have been criticized of. I've always been a team first guy, but I think I'm a quarterback. I, I think that's... Learn about uh, Lamar Jackson is not deadly accurate. Mechanics are not what you'd call pretty mechanics. No, I don't believe it's prejudice. I, I, I truly believe that they may not have some of the uh, necessities. I mean, it really comes down to racism. There was just this belief in the NFL that black players were not smart enough to play the ultimate thinking man's position, which is quarterback. And the team owners and the team executives and the coaches, they just thought that black people, black players lacked the intellect, lacked the leadership ability to really play that position and play it well because they just thought they were inferior. And even though we've made strides and We've seen a lot of progress. We still see these underlying undertones of racism. I have heard that he is a last guy in, first guy out type of quarterback, like not the oh, maniacal work no. ethic. Now that was Dan Orlovsky talking about this guy, the franchise quarterback of the Chicago Bears, Justin Fields. So I think it's important to highlight these four men as kind of laying the groundwork for the progression of black QBs in the NFL. Um, these four men kind of you can just track the progression from Marlon Briscoe being the first black quarterback drafted to James Harris becoming the first to start and lead a team to a playoff win to Warren Moon becoming the first black quarterback to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. And then there's Doug Williams. He was the first quarterback to win a Super Bowl as a starter. So he kind of shattered that racist misconception that black quarterbacks can't lead teams to Super Bowls. In the decades that followed, black quarterbacks continued to make progress, establishing themselves as successful starters in the NFL. The 21st century has seen an explosion of talented black quarterbacks in the league, with players like Michael Vick, Donovan McNabb, Russell Wilson, Lamar Jackson. No, sir, I'm a quarterback. Even today, Patrick Mahomes winning multiple awards, breaking records, and leading their teams to success. Overall, the history of black quarterbacks in the NFL is a story of perseverance, talent, and progress as players have overcome significant barriers to become successful and influential players at one of the most important positions in the game. So I'm gonna play a clip from the NFL celebrating a 100th year anniversary. And let's, uh, let's take a look at this clip real quick. Though the league featured black players prior, in 1946, the NFL officially Okay, integrated. hold up, stop. Rewind the tape. Look, 1934, they seemingly just left out something here. Look, they'll skip from 1934 to 1946, and they'll talk about how, they're, how they just integrated black players, but <laughs> they failed to mention how it, they didn't just integrate black players. They completely banned black players during that time, and they conveniently just skipped over that right there. <laughs> So in this article written by the New York Times during the Super Bowl, they talk about the progression of black quarterbacks um, from the past up until uh, the most recent NFL Super Bowl. But in the middle of the article, they talk about how black quarterbacks or black players in general were forced to change positions. Uh, in this example, they talk about Jimmy Ray. 
which he was the first black quarterback to win a national championship. But when Ray was selected by the Los Angeles Rams in the 16th round of the 1968 draft, the general manager called to tell him he would be playing defense, something he had never done. Ray ended up playing just two NFL games. And while we're on the topic of changing positions. And that's rare for wide receivers. That's A, B, and who else? Name me another one who's like that, right? Julio's not even like that. This guy is incredible in the open field and a and great ability to separate. Overall, the popularity of black quarterbacks can be attributed to their skills, athleticism, determination, and cultural significance. And they continue to be some of the most exciting and influential players in the sport today. Now, right now let's side. talk about the quarterback position and the evolution of the position since the beginning. The end zone. In the past, quarterbacks were primarily seen as game managers who were responsible for making safe and conservative plays and just avoid mistakes. They were typically asked to rely on their passing accuracy and decision making abilities and their athleticism was not emphasized. Today, however, the quarterback position has evolved into one of the most dynamic and demanding positions in the sport. Quarterbacks are now expected to have a strong arm, the ability to make deep throws, as well as the agility and mobility to extend plays and make things happen with their feet. They are also expected to have excellent leadership skills and the ability to read defenses and make quick, decisive decisions. So let's move away from talking about the NFL for a moment. And let's just talk about the landscape of how black athletes were treated in the 1960s, 70s and even the 50s. Here's an interview clip from Willie Thrower, who became the first black quarterback in 1953, talking about his experience uh, playing in the league and what he had to deal with on the field. The coaching staff up there let the referees get the game out of hand. And uh, they, they, they permitted them to play dirty against it. And uh, they broke uh, one of our uh, players' jaws, Kozikowski. Ronaldo Kozikowski, they broke his jaw. Cubby France, uh, Bob Giona and, and Harris, the two tackles, they picked him up and threw him down on his head head first. They did a job on us, and me, my face looked like a, a butcher had chopped me up. Huh. The thing is, every time I carried the ball, they were hitting me in the face any way they could, whether I hit the ball or not. And uh, I complained to the referees and so forth. To no avail, they didn't do anything, so. Despite their talent and success on the field, black athletes often encountered racism and prejudice both on and off the field and they had to struggle against a system that was rigged against them. In many cases, black athletes faced discrimination in their personal lives, such as being denied access to certain restaurants, hotels, and other public places. On the field, they often faced racial taunts and slurs from fans, opponents, and even officials. Many black athletes persevere and use their platform to fight for social justice and equality. The contributions and sacrifices of these athletes help to pave the way for future generations of black athletes who have been able to compete on a more level playing field. Nevertheless, the legacy of racial discrimination and prejudice in sports continues to this day, and black athletes still face many challenges as they strive for equality and justice in their personal and professional lives. Holmes because of his unorthodox throws, not because of his natural pocket presence. When that disappears, that is when they lose games. He runs, he scrambles, and he plays street ball. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, do me a big favor, hit the subscribe button, give me a quick like, and also down in the description, there's gonna be a bunch of different links for you. Uh, but the most important one is if you need a video editor, you can find me on Thumbtack, 7K Films. And real quick, drop me a comment. I love to hear from the audience. I want to see, you know, what you guys are into, uh, what you thought about the video. Stay tuned for the next video.